We'll call the select board meeting to order for Wednesday, February 2nd, 2022. This meeting is being recorded. All votes will be taken via roll call. And in attendance is Jay Nevin Smith, Joyce Chunglo, John Muskevitz, Amy Parsons, and myself, David Phil. Uh, first order of business is the consent agenda. We have warrants AP 2229, uh, PR 2216, PR 2215. AP 2230S, AP 2230. We have minutes from January 19th, 2022. Uh, one day liquor licenses for Newman Catholic Center at UMass at V1 Vodka, 212, 2022, 312, 2022, 49, 2022, 57, 2022, and 64, 2022. We have the appoint appointment of the tree superintendent, Scott McCarthy. And that's it. So moved. Second. All right, motion by Joyce, second by Jane. Any discussion on any of these? Jennifer, roll call. Roll call vote, Phil? Yes. Nevin Smith? Yes. Changaloo? Yes. Wiskevitz? Uh, yes, except for uh, abstain from Scott. Okay, and Parsons? Yes. Thank you. Uh, 3.1 public comments. We'll limit this to 15 minutes and please limit your comments to three minutes per person so that others may have the opportunity to speak. If you're here for public comments, turn your camera on, wave at us, raise the, the digital hand. Uh, Bill Dwyer. Hi. Um, it has just come to my attention that the town does not presently have representation on what is called the Joint Transportation Committee that uh, is run through the Pioneer Valley Planning Commission. And it is the <clears throat> group that creates something called the Transportation Improvement Plan, which is how federal transportation dollars are allocated around the region. Uh, David, you would have received a letter dated January 15th. It was directed to you as chair, but at 100 Middle Street. So I'm sure you'll see it at some point. Uh, I got a copy because I am the town's uh, planning board appointed representative to the Pioneer Valley Planning Commission. And our Joint Transportation Committee member is Christian Stanley. And uh, the alternate member uh, was Chris Okafer. Uh, and apparently we don't have any projects in the hopper at this time, but I thought it would just uh, bring to your attention the fact that we are unrepresented presently. Okay. Uh, so, Jennifer, sure. can we can we put that on the agenda for two weeks from now for an appointment to that? Did you receive that letter, uh, Caroline, or no? I have not. And I just looked, and I don't have it either. But we do have a letter from them, but it's it's for the assessment. It's not for the opening on the committee. Yeah, okay. I mean, well, we they, have... they don't. They're they're not telling you there's an opening on the committee. They're telling you who they have on their records as being on their committee. So uh, the technique would be that the uh, select board makes the appointment, makes the primary appointment and the alternate appointment. So um, if you want to put that on for your next agenda, um, the customarily it is, I believe, a select board member who serves as the primary and the director of DPW as the alternate. How, when are the meetings, Bill, usually, do you remember? Uh, it is probably, they probably only meets two or three times a year. And uh, if you don't have a project in the hopper, there's no real need to be there. But on the other hand, uh, getting projects into this hopper, it's not a grant program per se, it uh -huh. is the method by which the federal funds are allocated among the various communities. So if we have a project, a street widening, um, a reclamation of a street, um, 
we can get some of those dollars eventually, but we have to get on, we have to get in line and work through the process. And right now um, we have no one managing the process at the town level. Yeah, okay. and this is on a state level bill. So if they release what they're saying, I was just reading a beacon uh, 300 million for this year. If we had a couple of streets that we wanted to uh, reclaim or recondition or whatever you want to call them, uh, this would be the place to get them on the list and probably get some funding through Pioneer Valley Planning rather than trying to do it on our own. Correct. I, I'm, I'm not. I'm not prepared to uh, really discuss it at length. I'm, uh, as some of you may know it. Several years ago, quite a few years ago now, I was uh, chair of Pioneer Valley Planning Commission for six years. And in that capacity, I also participated with the Joint Transportation Committee. So it's not something that is directly a planning board activity or responsibility. It's just I know about, I know all the acronyms because I spent a lot of time with it. Uh -huh. uh, so, um, and I know that with an interim DPW, uh, you may want, not want to drop this on Scott. Um, I'll try to find out if there's a requirement that it be a select board member who serves as the town representative. Uh, I would be willing to be either the uh, principal or the alternate representative uh, just to, uh, sort of keep the ball rolling here. Um, and again, because I know all the buzzwords, but um, uh -huh. in lo long term, it would be best to have someone on the select board and the DPW director. Could you join us in two weeks, Bill, in case we had any questions? Uh, yeah, I mean, I can, I'm happy to, uh, 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 happy to come back. Yeah, and thank you for being interim for now. I appreciate that. So uh, it it have to if you want me to if you want me to do it on an interim basis, uh, put me on the uh, consent agenda to be appointed to replace uh, either Chris or Christian. Okay, great. Thanks, right. Bill. Okay, thank you. Much appreciated. Any other public comments? I don't see any. Last call. All right, we'll move on. Uh, 4.1, town administrator report. Carolyn, do you wanna do that? Sure. Um, we're continuing to work on the budget and capital requests. And in two weeks on the 16th, we will be presenting the budget to the tri-board. Uh, acting, acting DPW Director Scott McCarthy and I will be attending a Zoom presentation on February 17th. 17th it's a pre-construction meeting for the mass. Uh, Route 9 widening project. So finally, it is a uh, that I'm hoping to get a timeline that I can share with the public, the businesses, the restaurants, and uh, the, the local officials. Officials. So I will keep you updated, but that won't be to the 17th. And then on a really good um, good note, I just want to recognize our our deputy fire chief Evan Bryant for receiving the chief fire officer certification from the Massachusetts Fire Firefighters Academy. Uh, they had a nice um, certification ceremony last week, and Evan traveled every Thursday for 14 weeks and received his certificate. So congratulations to Evan. And that's all I have. Yeah, congratulations. All right. Um, next on the list here is 6.1 Grilinski APR. The select board is asked to read the confirmation of notice for the Grilinski APR regarding a proposed acquisition of agricultural preservation restriction and for a consent to reduce notice, reduce the notice period from 120 days to 100 to 120 days to 60 days. And so can somebody just tell me where the property is? Uh, it says uh, it is consists of parcels located on River Drive and Hadley. And let me click on the attachment here. I think it's across from the Sugar Shack, Joyce. Oh, down in the gully there? Yeah, down, down towards the river. Oh, yeah. Where the okay. cement was dumped. 
the famous cement. Yes. Yes. Okay, got it. So let me read this paragraph, and then I have this long notice I think I have to read as well. That way we cover all the bases. Um, in compliance with uh, GL7C, Section 37 of the Commonwealth of Massachusetts, acting by and through its Department of Agricultural Resources, hereby gives notice that the that it proposes to acquire an agricultural preservation restriction on the real property identified herein for the purpose of protecting in perpetuity its superior and productive agricultural resources by preventing their um, conversio to other use, con oh, conversion, oh. Their other uses. Sorry. That's okay. <laughs> I figured out what the word was. Um, so do I need to read the whole attachment, Jennifer? Is that the? Nope, you just need to do the first part of the announcement. And that needs to be a motion to approve that. And then you need a motion to waive the days from 120 to 60. OK. So the paragraph I already read or the paragraph one of the attachment? The paragraph you already read. OK, perfect. So if I need Come a motion. Right. OK. Second. Second. Motion by Amy, second by Joyce. Any other discussion on this? How many okay. acres? Uh, it does not say in this notice. Hold on. Joyce, this has already been voted on at town meeting and approved. This is just the final step of the process. Okay. If that if that helps, both of these were voted on at town meeting in May of 2021. Okay. 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 Sounds good. Okay. Taking if our time. Nothing, oh yeah. <laughs> if there's nothing else, uh, Jennifer, roll call. A roll call vote. Phil. Yes. Nevin Smith. Yes. Chungaloo. Yes. Wiskevitz. Yes. Parsons. Yes. Thank you. All right. And then I need a motion to reduce the notice period from 120 days down to 60 days. So moved. Second. Motion by Amy, second by Joyce. Any discussion on that? Jennifer, roll call. Bill. Yes. Was, uh, sorry, Nevin Smith. Yes. Chungaloo. Yes. Skevitz? Yes. And Parsons? Yes. Thank you. Okay, and now 6.2 Handrich APR. I'll read the same thing, but in compliance with GL7C Section 37, the Commonwealth of Massachusetts acting by and through its Department of Agricultural Resources, hereby gives notice that it proposes to acquire an agricultural preservation restriction APR on the real property identified herein for the purpose of protecting in perpetuity uh, its superior and productive agricultural resources by preventing their conversion to other uses. Um, the application received by MDAR indicates that the property is owned by William R. Hendrick Jr. and Priscilla E. Hendrick Family Trust and consists of parcels located at Moody Bridge Road. So moved. Again. Motion by Joyce, second by Amy. Any discussion on this? Jennifer, roll call. Roll call, Phil. Yes. Nevin Smith. Yes. Chungalo. Yes. Wiskevitz. Yes, the second parcel is 40 acres. I don't know if Grillinskis didn't say, Joyce. Okay, thank you. And um, Parsons. Yes. Thank you. All right, and then the same deal, a motion to reduce the notice period from 120 days to 60 days. So moved. Second. All right, motion by Joyce, second by Amy. Any discussion on that? Jennifer, roll call, please. Roll call, Phil. Yes. Nevin Smith. <clears throat> yes. Chungalo. Yes. Wiskevitz. Yes. And Parsons. Yes. Thank you. I will right. need all of you to come in and sign over the next two days, please. Okay. And that's all we have on the agenda other than executive session. So before we do that, does anybody have announcements? I have announcements and I also have one question. So I'll put the question first. Yep. I remember sometime previously, 
that we voted to um, make Hadley have an automatic uh, snow day without the blue lights. Have we ever done anything about that, putting the signs up at the entrance to the town in terms of plowing and staying off the streets? Blue lights, where were we gonna put those? We weren't gonna use lights. We were just gonna put signs out. You mean the uh, snow emerge, uh, kind of like Amherst has with the flashing blue lights for a snow emergency? Yes, but we weren't gonna use blue lights. We were just gonna put a sign up and assume people would know that it was an emergency. So we passed the bylaw officially, you know, so it was actually on the books this time. And as far as I know, there's signs on most roads into town, but probably not by the bridge. I don't recall seeing one by the bridge. That, that basically says no on-street parking between, what is it, November through April, something like that. In case of snow, yeah, like that. Yeah, so we probably, I guess I'll, I'll ask Scott to check on that because I, I don't think there is one by the bridge. I know okay, there's thank one. Thank you. Yeah, I think there's one by UMass. I know there's one up on 47 by the Sunderland line. I don't know about the other, so. Okay, so my announcement is that the uh, Friends of the Hadley Council on Aging are having a fundraising roast beef dinner on Sunday, February 20th. It's a to-go. Uh, it will be served so that you can reheat it in your own, at your own convenience. Uh, tickets are $25. There's a limited number. They're available at the collector's office at the Legion or at the Senior Center. They must be paid in advance. Okay, good. Got oh. the North Hat we got the North Hadley crowd cooking that. That is correct. Yes. Sounds good. I'll have to stop and get some. Any other thing? I have a few. Should I go for it? Well wait, yeah, uh, one more. Um, oh, one more. Okay, Jane. One more. Um, COVID testing has, uh, people are not doing it as often or as frequently. So it's been cut back to once a week instead of twice a week. Okay. And what day, any particular day, Jane? Uh, no, it varies with the nurse's schedule because she does work at Cooley. Okay. Joyce, your turn. Yes, uh, unfortunately, we've had quite a little busy last couple of weeks here um, in the passing and people um, passing at this time of the year. Um, we have uh, Douglas Stephen Jantz that has passed away. We send our condolences to his family. Charlie Brown, uh, we send his condolences to his family. Ursula Whitkus. Um, mother of Richie and Tom, um, Betsy, and send our condolences to, to them and their families. William Grabeck um, and their family. We, uh, John, that's your uncle, correct? Yeah. Yep, yeah. condolences to you and your family also on passing a bill. Um, Veronica Blondie McQuestion, she was 103 years old and she held the Boston Post cane uh, was given to her uh, in 2018 uh, as the oldest resident of Hadley. And we also have the passing of Ruth Cook, who was the mother of uh, Pam Bombardier, Dyer Cook, and Glenn Cook. And to all of their families that live here in Hadley also, we send our condolences to, to their families. Um, we don't have an official um, newspaper article on uh, the passing of David Farnham but Sally had posted it today in Facebook. So I feel comfortable in, in um, sending our condolences to Dave's family, Mike, Sally, their children and uh, others. And Dave was a long, long time member of our board of health. Um, he served the town quite well. Um, and I, I know there's other committees and I'm going to delve into other things that he uh, participated in, but he was a a uh, really good man and participated in being a volunteer um, throughout his life for the town of Hadley. So our condolences to his family. And that's it. Yeah, uh, Bill, Bill was a police officer in town. He was also- Oh, thank you. He was also in the fire department for a while before he became a police officer. 
and then he went to the court systems for the state. So, okay, thanks, uh, John, and delving into that a little bit more too. Thank you. All right, any other announcements? All right, so we have executive session, not to reconvene an open session, but the select board will enter into executive session pursuant to MGL chapter 30A, section 21A3, to discuss litigation regarding the matter of Hieronymus Peter versus Town of Hadley, where discussion in open session would have a detrimental effect on the town's litigation position, and the chair so declares. And let's see, so I need a motion to move to executive session. So moved. Second. Motion by Joyce, a second by Amy. Um, as the chair of the Hadley Select Board, I state that the board has moved and seconded to enter into executive session and that I state that discussing the matter in open session will have an adverse effect on the town of Hadley and uh, we will not reconvene in open session. So roll call vote. Roll call vote, Phil. Yes. Nevin Smith. Uh, yes. Sorry, Chungalu. Yes. Wiskevitz. Yeah. And Parsons. Yes. Thank you. All right. Good night, everybody.